Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope for all you guys who uh, traded the Fed, hope everybody uh, came out unscathed and hopefully everybody's just living uh, their best life. Before we go on guys, if you could be so kind and click a like, take a second, click a like and I really would appreciate that. It helps the channel, uh, it helps to get the word out for the unbiased technical analysis crowd and so we could continue to provide you day-to-day uh, -day value. So thank you very much for uh, tuning in. So like we talked about yesterday, um, Fed came, Fed, Fed went. Uh, tell me if you heard this before. We left rates unchanged. Our goal is a 2% inflation for half an hour. Market goes up, market goes down, market goes up, market goes down. He finally starts speak, stops speaking and the market goes into that in, into the initial direction. That's exactly what happened today. If you look at the cues last night, again, you had SMCI come out with earnings. You had uh, AMD come out with earnings. You had Starbucks come out with earnings, all uh, negatively impacted. You had a nice pop initially on uh, Amazon. They give us another pop after the Fed. But this is this is literally the summary of what happened. Okay, you don't need to dive into uh, and start to examine word for word. Uh, for the Q&A session of Powell. This is what happened. We gapped down. We went sideways literally for the whole morning. There was a couple of really good pivots. Uh, AMD, uh, NVIDIA got, got hit really aggressively. Then you had the, the, the Q&A pump and the Q&A dump. And the moral of the story is it doesn't make a difference what happens in between. The moral of the story is we closed right below uh, the 422 100 day EMA that we talked about on last night's video. That's it. That's all it needs to matter. Everything else is absolute noise. They tried to rally the market. The market got stuffed. People chased. Uh, people sold into it. People uh, bought it. I mean, everybody got wicked out. Luckily, I don't trade the Fed. Uh, I was done uh, by the morning. Uh, the video was great. Absolutely great. We'll get to the pivots in a second. Uh, for all you guys who are trading in the afternoon, you're a much better human being than I am. But again, I, I, I've been doing this since I'm 24, 25 years old. I'm turning 50 in a month, okay? Um, I know when I'm beat, okay? I know that driving into the heart and soul of a tornado is probably not going to end well for me. So you know what? I don't do it, okay? I, I, I just don't trade the Fed days, or at least the Fed announcement. I trade into the Fed day uh, like we did this morning. But I leave. I completely leave. Um, you know the Fed announcement law because it's Las Vegas. It's it's Atlantic City. It's it's random anarchy. You know. Again, I, I've always said this. Uh, I trade the biggest average shoe names: Tesla, Nvidia, uh, Amazon, AMD's, uh, the Metas of the world. Right. That's enough action for me. Okay. I don't need uh, a stock to go up ten, down ten, up ten, down ten. That's an EKG machine. Right. That's a heart attack ready to happen. Um, I want my trades to be boring, lethargic. And predictable, and that's it. So when you go into the FOMC, you're expecting the kick in the, in, in the you know where, right? You're expecting to get punched in the face. So my point is, if you know everything is going to happen, and you know they're going to wick you out 200 different ways from Sunday, well, why put yourself out there, right? Why you put yourself uh, in exposing uh, your hard-earned assets that you've you've grown to love uh, and to appreciate? You know, once the Fed announcement came. I logged off. It was 80 degrees here in New Jersey. I went swimming, had a great afternoon, uh, caught some sun, had a nice little lunch. And the moral of the story is I am relaxed. Um, I have a very, very specific game plan going into tomorrow. And it didn't matter to me what happened after I logged off. Again, our, our job as trainers is to get in and get out whatever whatever time frame you're trading on. It could be multiple years, multiple months, or multiple minutes. The point is, you're trying not to get the sexy trade. You're trying to get the rational, lethargy trade that's going to play out in your direction with a high probability of reward to risk, not risk versus reward. And when you get into the FOMC, it's all risk. Okay, It's absolutely all risk. It doesn't make a difference how good your setup is going to have. You're going to get wicked out. Again, as the old uh, adage goes, the first 78 moves of the Fed is a fake out. Well, that's exactly what happened today. 
Uh, but the bottom line is we did close below uh, the 100-day uh, EMA that we talked about the importance of on uh, last night's video. And the question now is what happens next? Well, I'll tell you what happens next. The Bulls better reclaim that 422 level very, very quickly tomorrow. Okay, that's the bottom line. They better reclaim that 422 level tomorrow uh, very, very quickly because if we start building on the bottom channel today, then you can see the next measure potential uh, goes to 418 and then ultimately the bottom of last week's lows of 413. These are the facts, okay? These are not something that we have to debate. You don't have to have a conversational piece with somebody on social media. These are the facts. We, we needed to close above 422. We closed below 422. And now I'm hoping for a gap up tomorrow. That's what I'm hoping for. And I'm not hoping for a gap up to go long. I'm hoping for a gap up so these stocks will get stuffed into supply, get rejected, start taking out today's ranges, and then have another, you know, have another waterfall. That's my game plan. Will that uh, play out that way? You know, to be determined, but that's the whole point. You have an opinion, you have a game plan, you take the data in front of you, and you wait for confirmation. Is it possible that we rally tomorrow, that it's a knee-jerk reaction, uh, kind of a, a, a muted, crazy reaction as far as uh, the, the, the Jay Powell comments? Yeah, it's possible, right? It's possible we, we rally tomorrow, we close at 426 on the queues. But again, we're going with the probabilities. We're going through the data. We're not hoping, we're not praying, and we're not predicting. We're taking in front of us. And again, if you look at all the names that we were talking about, they lost a lot. You know, there's, there's names that lost some big levels. Look at the semiconductors, right? Uh, obviously, SMCI and uh, AMD did some technical damage, say, to the group. But ARM today closed below the 10-day. Again, that's the birth of the trade. This is now the lowest close in this whole formation. If ARM starts building below this channel, you know, this thing's going to get hit. Uh, AMD had you know, a good quarter, but they sold it off. Again, the same way they keep on continuously sell it off below the 50-day moving average. If this thing starts confirming the earnings lows today, this thing's going to get hit. Look at Netflix, right? Netflix has been going sideways. They tried to rally to several times. They, it went sideways from the earnings low. Look how close this thing is for the earnings low. If Netflix starts taking down the bottom channel here, well, this thing could get hit as well. Look at NVIDIA, right? These are all names that we trade every single day based on technical areas of supply and demand. Look look at NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA gives a great trade today, absolutely phenomenal trade today. We'll get to the pivots in a second. It lost 100 day, reclaimed the back on the close. Now, what, what happens, right? Again, I understand... Uh, 900 calls, 960 calls, 1,000 calls, 1,100 calls. I get it, right? I've seen the option flow just like everybody else. But what happens if it confirms tomorrow's channel, right? What happens tomorrow if it confirms today's channel? Well, I'll tell you what happened. If we if we start building below today's channel, we're going to see 799, 800, the 60, uh, 65 day uh, rising support. So there's a lot of names that got hit today. There's a lot of names uh, that started performing technical damage, but the most important part is we are aware of that. Okay, we're not guessing, we're not hoping. Uh, we are in control. Again, we, you're, you, there's only two ways to trade, right? You could be the predator or the prey. You can't be both, okay? And no matter what your style of trading is, you always want to get ahead of what potentially could happen next, the next disaster. You want to put out fires before they start, and that's the whole point of understanding technical analysis. So for example, right, Tesla had... A horrible quarter. We all know that, right? We all had a horrible quarter, but they had a really, really great run. We took advantage of that great run, but now it's getting very, very close to kind of a line in the sand, not an aggressive line in the sand, but a tradable line in the sand. Obviously, the line in the sand is the 50-day moving average where it reclaimed after earnings. So we'll get to the 50-day in a second, but look where it is, right? We closed right on the five-day. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast for a long time, or you are brand new to uh, brand new to us, the five-day moving average for me is the shortest-term sentiment, okay? Uh, it is not really used throughout uh, trading. I use I've been using it for many years. I don't know how I found it, why I found it, but I, I use it. So Tesla today traded the five-day and it bounced. Now, what happens if it loses the five-day? Well, I'll tell you what happens. If it starts confirming the five-day, then we will test the 50-day moving average and it will give us a nice... Uh, tradable potential. So that's it, guys. We are set up for tomorrow. Uh, sometimes you are uh, trying to uh, sit there and, you know, really split atoms and figure things out. But the moral of the story is we had a chance to rally. We got rejected off the rally. We closed below the 100 day uh, EMA on the NASDAQ 100. So I'm hoping uh, we can get a gap up tomorrow uh, in the NASDAQ 100 so they can get stuffed. Uh, but if not, if we start going lower, I will be watching today's channels on some of the names 
uh, that we just highlighted here and see if they can confirm back more to the downside. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.